That's maybe a bad move given the weather conditions. <laughs> All induction noise. <laughs> There's a reason why this is one of the best selling sports cars in the world. Welcome back to TCR TV and today you join me with the all new 2024 Mazda MX-5 RF Executive line. Now you're probably wondering, well what's new about it? Well, there isn't that much that is new about it. This model has been around for around nine years now with a few subtle tweaks and bringing things up to modern line. This car has started to get a few more touchy feel is inside and basically a little bit better on the infotainment side of things but is it still the great mx5 that it should be first impressions of this car i think it is typical mx5 there's not much changed over the years this current shape has been around for around nine years but with all that said it's still the size of an MX-5. And what I mean by that is, the MX-5 has been around for 35 years. And most cars that have been around for that sort of time, if you look at like the Mark 1 Golf, and it's gone up to be the latest Golf near the Mark 8 now, the size has increased drastically. With this, it hasn't. It's still the small MX-5 that they always have been. They've got a little bit wider, but wheelbase wise, I don't really think this has got much bigger because MX-5s have always been about being small and agile. This particular model costs over £34,000, which sounds a lot of money for an MX-5, but with inflation and things getting better, it's actually probably worth it. And if you're considering buying one of these, check the link in the description and the top pin comment for some cracking deals that are to be had on these two-seater roadsters. This color is aero gray. It is an option, but it is a very trendy color at the moment. A lot of people are specking this on cars, but in my opinion, it just looks like primer. Not that that's a bad thing. I think the car pulls it off very well with these 16 inch black alloy wheels that are also diamond cut, very swanky. The lights, obviously this shape's been around for a long time. So you're well aware, they're very snouty, very sharp. Little splitters down here, black across here, air vents that are not actually air vents. And the one thing to note is this car has got sharper over time and less rounder because these wings are absolutely massive. It has a really wide stance, this car, and has remained very low. One of the things I should point out that's evidently changed is the roof. This is the Roadster, so it has the clamshell roof where the whole hard top folds back into the car. If I didn't tell you that this car was convertible without looking at these lines, I genuinely don't think you'd know. It does look amazing how the lines sort of curve back and you end up with this like shelf and a proper glass window. My Mazda MX-5 has a canvas roof and when you go over bumps, the back window bounces, but this is a very solid looking car. I also like this aerial here. In the older MX-5s, it used to sink into the body and come back out electronically. It doesn't do that anymore. And the main reason for that is because it used to cause a lot of rust on the bodies. But I like the fact that we have a standard aerial and it's been made a feature out of because it kind of gives the car like a remote control toy sort of look. Now, you're probably wondering what the boot space is like, and I am not going to lie, you, if you're buying this car, you're simply not buying it for the boot. It's around 55 litres. I'm not going to get in there because I simply cannot get in there and I will not embarrass myself trying to get in there. But the question is, is it enough space? Yes, because if you're buying a car like this, you're probably going to use it on a summer's day. You might be going for a long drive down the coast and you're going to take probably one bag with you and your partner and disappear and stay at a hotel. So it's not really a car that boasts a big boot space, nor does it need to. I also like the fact that Mazda still give you these kits in this like imitation leather bags for changing the wheel they've been around since the 90s and it's nice that they're still there it's a nice little touch the other thing to mention is these twin exhausts at the back now a lot of car manufacturers again are going down the fascia route which i think looks really rubbish because an exhaust on a car especially a car like this if you're a petrol head is a boasting feature they're not massive the twin but the best thing is they're actually mirror chrome stainless steel so you cannot moan about that and on your sunday when you're caring for a car you're going to get the auto sell out give it a scrub and make it look smart. With the MX-5, you get 16 inch wheels as standard. Got the wheels wrong, the 17 inch machine black. And they are diamond cut. There's no sort of fake plasticky items going on here. Disc brakes all round. And again, that's been round since the nineties, but it's something that's progressed over time and the brakes are significantly better. You only have to squeeze your foot and this car comes to a complete stop. Now you're probably wondering what's it powered by? Well, if we just pop the bonnet, the catch has never moved. It's always remained in the same position. You're greeted 
by this lovely engine bay it's very very tidy and straight away there are so many similarities with Mazda over the years because that engine and the rocker cover appears to be exactly the same shape with a few added modern bits on top of it the battery is now in the front whereas it used to be in the boot so obviously that's giving you more boot space but what powers this car is a two litre naturally aspirated inline four engine which produces 184 ps which is around 182 brake horsepower and it has a six speed manual gearbox the numbers don't sound anything ridiculous but bear in mind this car only weighs around 1350 kilograms that's like the weight of a touring caravan you know the classic mini was nearly 700 kilograms so this is just pushing on double the weight with about four times the horsepower oh, getting inside a minute to get away from the rain or the true northern weather i'll talk to you about what you get in this car now i hate doing this i hate having a piece of paper in my hand and reading from that because you could basically do this yourself but the reality is i've not got very long with this car and i've got to get through it so this is the two liter sky active g petrol model we've been through the engine specs obviously it's 184 ps at 7000 rpm not to 60 6.8 seconds top speed 137 miles per hour <laughs> fuel consumption let's face it are you buying this car for good fuel consumption no you're absolutely not but it is around 32 mpg and the highest you could possibly get is around 48 don't know what that's like because i've not lived with one fuel tank 45 litres inside this car standard equipment you've got stop start dual exhaust system led headlights automatic headlight leveling led daytime running lights coming home and leaving home lights driver and passenger seat manual slide tilt recline and adjustment so like you say there is no powered seats in this car i've got it in its furthest back setting and it is still very cramped in here but i am quite a tall person you get an 8.8 .8 inch led screen on the dashboard which does come with apple carplay and android auto connect you've got seven years free european integration map assist so that means that the sat nav will automatically update itself for the next seven years and then i'm assuming you'll have to pay or the technology just becomes too old to update you've got hill launch assist tire pressure monitoring system now the exclusive line does come with a lot of other things inside the car the main ones are you get dynamic stability control with track mode sports suspension featuring bilstein dampers now bilstein isn't you know a, a massive make it's a common make but they do do a sporty version so i'm assuming what that's what that is you get the front strut brace in the engine bay that doesn't come on the standard model and you also get the two-tone power retractable hardtop which is this reversing camera parking sensors all around frameless mirrors and you get a premium bose surround sound system now it doesn't say bose anywhere in this car it must just be behind it and it's kind of nice that it's not sort of in your face and one of the main things is that i do love you also get speakers in the headrest which is something that was in the 90s cars i really really do like this car i think it's nice it's very comfortable very sporty and you feel like you kind of you feel like the car kind of wraps around you rather than you sat on it so let's take it for a drive mx5s are renowned for having a, a short gear throw bit of spin there that pulls quite well actually and there's 70 the noise is actually quite surprising to be honest and then when you drop it into the sixth gear the sound completely disappears you get like a quite a comfortable road noise something that you can learn to live with now mx5s are absolutely famous for their gear change it's very short it throws nice very clunky and there's no bagginess to it it is basically a short shifter and they have maintained that don't get me wrong it's not as short as the older cars and it certainly doesn't feel as harsh as the older cars but I'd like to say it's got more of a premium feel to it. The older cars did feel a bit harsh at times, especially when you're knocking it over to third or dropping back into second. But with this one, it's very precise, very short, and it's basically an MX-5 gearbox. I've never really found another car that has a gearbox as good as an MX-5, and the clutch is nice and soft too, and the bite point is very low. And when you do put your foot down, it does lunge forward and throw you into a nice position. With that said, is it fast? Yeah, I think it's fast. It's not as fast as some of the things on the market at the moment, like with all your EVs, nothing ever is gonna be as fast as that. But it offers noise, 
and that's what everybody wants it just pulls it's just it gives you that that mx5 sort of smile <laughs> it's there because you do feel like you're in like a little drift car you feel like the back end will just pop and slip or do what you want at any moment but it does feel very planted the acceleration is nice don't get me wrong it's not it's not neck snapping steering feels very firm especially when you move in and it does have a light feel to it and it is very agile the car does rock suspension probably could do with being a little bit harder but obviously Mazda can't tend to the boy racer style of people with all the cars they do have to have a happy medium and I think if you put your own suspension on there it's something that you would probably change for personal preference but you can't moan for what it is a second <laughs> It's just all induction noise. <laughs> wow, I tell you what, that picks up well. And the noise is good. There's more, certainly more induction noise than there is engine noise and exhaust tone, but it's enough really for what you need. Sorry, I keep messing with my hair, but the weather is terrible today. It's always the way when filming a car, you wanna get some nice shots of it and um, you just can't. So, let's have a look. Lights are on red. The other thing as well is I can't really put the cameras on the car because they just keep sliding off with the water. But that's the joys of the UK. There you go, the back end's just slipped there. There you go. It's still got the MX-5s. Yeah. <laughs> Fourth. I really, really like this car. Oh. The downshift is nice. I really like that. It picks up well, especially with the down change. It's so smooth. It doesn't jolt you into gear. When you change up the gearbox, you get that sort of push and it does assert you that you have gone into gear. Coming down is smoother and you can feel that the clutch just feathers it out. But the way it picks up, <laughs> they really haven't lost it these cars it's the one car that has kept to its pedigree and it's brilliant a lot of people give the mx5 bad credit they, they, they turn around and say yeah well it's just not the mx5 it used to be and that's absolute rubbish it still has all the characteristics of what an mx5 should be <laughs> it just the way it pulls i would love though slightly more headroom I, I, I struggle in mine, don't get me wrong, there's nothing nothing new there, it's not like the roof's got smaller, but when the weather's nice, people take the roof off, don't they, and, that, and that's what it's for, you get that open airy feel, it can just be a bit bleak in the winter, or when you live up north like me and it's always raining, and the majority of the time the roof remains on, but I really am impressed with this car, and for 34 grand, is it worth it? Um, I would probably say yeah certainly is with that <laughs> just the way it picks up honestly you don't need a silly top speed in a car like this you just need something that picks up well shouts he's agile in the corners back end slips occasionally it is more than enough sports car you don't it's so fun to drive the way it stays planted as well there's no wallowiness it even has an indicator to tell you that you're taking your hands off the steering wheel and the speed limit warnings it is a bit slow like i am at the minute on a national speed limit road and it's telling me i'm on a 40 road that is a bit slow i think you can turn that off in the settings but like most cars as soon as you get out and get back in it comes back right so i've just pulled into a petrol station let's pop the roof you might think i'm mad but at the end of the day what isn't an, what's an mx5 without the roof being popped off there we go are we down yes we are that is the roof down let's go and instantly this car feels a hell of a lot airier than what it did a second ago it is raining a little bit but what is an mx5 if you can't have the roof down just pulls lovely 
Still has that MX-5 shunt from the back. Really cannot argue how good this car is. You might think I'm absolutely insane driving with the roof down this time of year in an MX-5, but the reality is that's what MX-5 ownership is all about. Just putting the roof down, having the wind in your hair, or little of it, I should say, and just enjoying it. Don't get me wrong, you do lose a bit of the noise from the car. That is very, very nice. It pulls nice. It isn't as harsh as the old MX-5s where you're in your seat. Don't get me wrong, it still has a nice poke. But then again, most MX-5 enthusiasts go down the route of lowering the springs, getting it flatter to the floor, and just getting it to drive a bit more stiff. But then there's the other side of MX-5 ownership. Just got wet by a bus. This is where the stigma of being classed as a hairdresser comes from. You know, you might buy a car like this for your wife, and then the reality is on a Sunday when it's a nice day, you're gonna pop that roof off and enjoy it yourself. This car is something you'd enjoy on a summer's day. Just taking it down the track or taking it down the B roads, a bit of B road bashing, as I always call it. And you just enjoy. <laughs> it just, it brings that MX-5 smile. I don't care what anybody says, there's a reason why this is one of the best selling sports cars in the world. It's because they made it great to start off with, they've slowly adapted it and made things better and now it's got the comforts and everything that you could possibly want for a car and I've just realised I'm entering the motorway here. <laughs> it's got the comforts of everything that you could possibly want for a car and in the same respect it's still sporty and agile. The chassis feels very stiff and it does everything that an MX-5 should. I've just entered the A1M. That's maybe a bad move given the weather conditions. But still, there's not a lot of noise with that roof down. <laughs> Who'd have thought it would be raining like this and I would have the roof down on this car? So to summarise, do I think this car is worth £34,000? Yes, I absolutely do. Is it a pedigree MX-5? Yes, it absolutely is. And should you go and buy one? Well, that is totally up to you. And if you want to see some cracking deals on these cars, check the link in the description and the top pin comment because you can get these for an absolute song of a price per month. Do us a favour, give us a like and follow. I'll see you all very soon and make sure you do everything in style. Oh,